The first of the Ten Commandments can be divided into three parts. And the first part in the Jewish tradition is considered the first of the Ten Commandments, setting the tone for all the commandments that come after it. The Protestant tradition combines the first two parts with the third part co constituting the second commandment. But the Catholic tradition combines all three of these parts to make up the first declaration of God as the first of his Ten Commandments. And the beginning of that commandment sets the tone for all the other commandments that come after it. And that first part declares very simply, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. Now, how does that set the tone for the commandments that follow? It declares very simply that these commandments come from God. Without God, there cannot be any absolute law or absolute standards that we are called to live. And it recognizes that we must recognize the existence of God if we are to have any law that we are to follow. Without the existence of God, there are no absolute truths. And without absolute truths, we cannot say, you shall not kill. You cannot say that anything is good or evil. It reduces everything simply to, I prefer this, I don't prefer that. Even atheists, if you ever listen to some, fall back on the idea of absolute truths when they want to push a particular social or political agenda, every now and again you'll hear them say, we should do this or that because it's the right thing to do. They may not believe in an absolute God, but just their invoking the right thing to do sees that almost by human nature we want to fall back on some sense of an absolute truth. It implies that if this is the right thing to do, then if we don't do it, it's the wrong thing to do. But we simply acknowledge the obvious that is presented in this first commandment. It is God who gives us these laws, and without God, there cannot be any absolute truth or any absolute idea of good versus evil. We can't even say something that, say, the Holocaust is an absolute evil. We could only say we don't like it. Of course, that would be unthinkable, because most people would agree the Holocaust was an absolute evil. But it happened because people within that society did not believe it was an absolute evil. So we cannot declare something as an absolute evil, otherwise it would be subject to popular opinion, which could change. We have to acknowledge the absolute existence of God who gives the meaning to those commandments that are given in this Decalogue, in the Ten Commandments. And he says, I am the Lord your God an echo to the name of God that is given to Moses from the burning bush, which in the Catholic tradition states, I am who am. Now that's a little bit different from the Protestant designation of what God says from the burning bush. In many traditions, it declares, I am that I am. But it's important to note that God is not a that. He is a who. God is a person. And that is echoed in the Christian tradition of what Jesus has revealed about God, that God is a unity that consists of a trinity of persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, which engage in a relationship with itself and has extended that relationship of love to humanity in the salvation of Christ. But God is not a that, God is a who. And as he declared to Moses in the burning bush, I am who am, He's now declaring in the Ten Commandments, I am the Lord your God. We hear that echoed in the words of Jesus, especially in the Gospel of John, where he will state, I am the bread of life. I am the resurrection. I am the Lord your God. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Before Abraham was, I am. And that echoes back to that name declared by God in the burning bush, which he now states, in this first of the Ten Commandments, I am the Lord your God. And what finally does he declare in the end? 
who brought you out of the land of Egypt, the house of slavery. God is a God of freedom. God is a God who wants us to be free. God is the God who gives us that freedom we are to enjoy. And these commandments are not shackles, but rather the instruments God gives us to live as a free people, made in God's image and likeness, called to live in the freedom that he gives us. This, believe it or not, was recognized by the founding fathers of the United States. And this is how we see that principle even relevant down to today. What do they state in the Declaration of Independence? First, it states a recognition of nature and nature's God, the laws of nature and of nature's God. But it also states that we are endowed by our Creator with certain unalienable rights. And among these rights are life liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It recognizes that liberty is a gift from God, that government is formed to protect so that we can live as a free people. And so in this beginning of that first commandment, this first part of the first commandment, that sets the stage for all the rest of the commandments, it sets the tone. Who gives us these laws? These aren't products of human opinion or popular opinion that can change. These are a product of absolute truths that can only exist if there is a God. A God who is consistent in his presence with his holy people. A God who revealed himself to Moses and who revealed himself through Jesus as a unity encompassed in a trinity. And a God who gives us freedom and whose will from his infinite love is that we live as a free people with the standards given to us for beings made in the image and likeness of God.